Greetings, dear viewers. You are watching Delicious Kazakhstan program. Today, we are visiting Ural, the city with a rich history, which is located on the bank of the Zhaik River. You are probably wondering what we are doing in Ural, and I will answer you. Have you heard about the Sorochinsky Fair? This is a major event in the Ukraine which we will visit today. And the most interesting thing is that for the first time this event was celebrated here in Ural in Kazakhstan. What is coming today? Let's find out together. Sorochinsky Fair is one of the many festive bazaars that have been held in the Ukraine since the 19th century. It became famous after the work of Nikolai Vasilievich Gogol, which was called the Fair of Sorochinsky. This tradition was revived in the 60s of the last century. At present, the event was given the status of National Sorochinsky Fair. Today, at the fair, guests can buy food, handicrafts and modern industrial products. Usually, the fair is held towards the end of August. Hello, Yershat. Ukrainians are cheerful people and just as hospitable as the Kazakhs. Guests are greeted at a rich table served with all traditional dishes. For example, we have borscht. Among these Slavs, especially Russians and Ukrainians, there are still disputes over whom this dish belongs to. In fact, it is a traditional Ukrainian dish. We also hold an annual event, the Sorochinsky Fair. We sing songs, dance, hold contests, strengthen friendship with all people. We invite everyone to participate in the fair. In general, Ukrainians love farming. We love gardening planting potatoes and onions. Growing a garden is in our blood. This is the legacy of our ancestors. Ukrainians, along with Russians and Belarusians, form the East Slavic group. The language belongs to the East Slavic group of the Indo-European languages. By the way, the old Slavonic writing founded in the 10th century by Cyril and Methodius originates in the Ukraine. Ukrainians were relocated to the Kazakh steppes under the influence of imperial policy. Catherine the Great defeated the Cossacks along Zaporizhia and forced them to move to Kazakhstan, Siberia and beyond. They were evicted from western Ukraine to Kazakhstan due to the formation of centers of resistance to Soviet power. They certainly settled in the most or less fertile and habitable territories. Ukrainians, who here since the 19th century, 
в начале 20 века, и потом это переселение закончилось с освоением церкви. Those Ukrainians, who settled here at the end of the 19th century, at the beginning of the 20th century, were neighbors of the Kazakhs and developed virgin lands. Moreover, the Kazakhs were forced to settle down in the late 1920s. Naturally, there was a mutual enrichment of cultures. Kazakhs learned how to raise livestock, select best breeds of livestock, and know weather conditions. The Terek T region is most populated by Ukrainians. They had a wealth of experience in the cultivation of garden crops and grain crops. The Kazakhs naturally started to grow gardens, which they have never done before due to a nomadic lifestyle. I think that in the culture of every nation there is a harvest festival. It is held to mark the end of winter, a long wait for the fruits of labor. At the end of summer, all vegetable garden crops, grain crops are ripening. People have to collect the harvest sell the surplus, and then celebrate the holiday. We grew crops, we reap a harvest and sell it, and then we meet at the fair. After we sell everything, we sing, dance, and celebrate the event. Folk crafts of the Ukrainian people are a part of their life. Any product related to material culture is made with special skill and love, carefully and tastefully decorated. The centuries-long secrets of craftsmanship have been passed down from generation to generation and have not been lost to this day. One of these unusual crafts is the manufacture of amulets. Of course, for a long time, people have tried to protect their homes from negative influences, from evil spirits. And long ago, this handicraft originated to create some kind of amulets for the house. To manufacture these various amulets, natural materials were used that were available in every home. Each amulet has a certain purpose – to protect home or crop. Everyone knows a horseshoe hanging upwards. It is sad to keep evil out and bring good luck into your home. Many years ago, my mother Melnikova Nina Mefodievna started making amulet dolls, using the skill bequeathed to her by Ukrainian ancestors, and she passed down her skills to me. Symbols used in the manufacture of amulets also have their own meaning. For example, a sunflower is our sun, and it is used to symbolize warmth and happiness happiness in the house. Garlic is used to protect from evil spirits. Banknotes, money signs symbolize wealth. And also this married couple symbolizes a long family life. If a person appeared in the house with some negative intentions, bad thoughts, such a talisman somehow protects a house from negative energy. Learning is an endless journey for anyone because all the time there are some new interesting materials, new technologies. Here, for example, this amulet is made using the technique of salt dough. Flour and fine salt are used here. Naturally, this is molded, kneaded and painted. These garlics are made from polyester batting and a simple bag. This married couple is made using this stocking technique, when nylon and polyester batting are used. The unique features of the Ukrainian culture evolved due to the geographical position and relations with representatives of other ethno-cultural groups. In general, handicrafts that are important for Ukrainian folk culture include embroidery, knitting and architectural art. Ukrainian embroidery differs depending on the region. In addition, the design, composition, colors and methods of embroidery have their own history. Ukrainian national clothes are divided into two types. There are outfits for holidays and casual wear. 
For example, casual outfit usually includes wide leg pants, which are called sharavari, or a long dress with a belt and a simple leather headdress. On holidays, it is customary to wear fine clothes. Women wear beautiful jewelry on holidays. They necessarily wear a beautiful apron, wide skirts and beautiful blouses with hand-embroidered ornaments. Ukrainian women like to wear scarves most of all, such as those with a floral print. Ukrainian men are supposed to wear a white shirt and red sharavari, a bright red belt. Ukrainian dishes are popular among other Slavic peoples and the CIS countries. On holidays, the Ukrainians always prepare pancakes called blini from buckwheat and wheat flour. If we talk about Ukrainian cuisine, it consists of three components. These are pork, salted vegetables and bakery products. The Ukrainians are believed to cook the most delicious borscht. Dostar. Dear friends, today I will learn how to cook the main dish of Ukrainian cuisine, borscht. My teacher is Galina. Hello, how are you? I'm fine. Wonderful. Then, before we start cooking, tell us what the name of this dish, borscht, means. I'm curious. Borscht is an authentic Ukrainian dish. It was first mentioned a long time ago, nearly in the 14th century. This dish got its name from the first ingredient, hogweed. But this is not the hogweed that we are afraid of. We do not like the weed. This is a completely different herb. Well, unfortunately, there is no such herb anymore, but its name remained. The main broth was made from beet, adding kvass, water, as well as the leaves of hogweed. In those early days, there were no potatoes and tomatoes. Therefore, they added all kinds of greens, carrots, there may be turnips. In general, everything that grew in this area was put into this broth and boiled. What ingredients are needed for our today's modern borscht? We will add potatoes. Well, meat comes first. Ukrainian borscht is naturally made of pork. This is the main meat for Ukrainians. Potatoes, cabbage, onions, beets, tomatoes and tomato paste. Make sure to add peppers, carrots, garlic, bacon too, as an additive, beans. First, we boil the meat, because nourishing broth is needed for delicious borscht. First, we will sauté vegetables. Great! I'll help you! So we need onion first. You can chop the onion. I'll cut carrots. The onion should be simply chopped into dices. Some housewives grate carrots, but we prefer to cut the carrot into strips. Galina, what exactly is borscht healthy for? These ingredients are generally very healthy. For example, carrots contain carotene, the vitamin that improves vision. Onions are known for high content of antioxidants. It turns out that borscht belongs to dishes with a high content of vitamins. Beets give both taste and color. This is also the main ingredient of Ukrainian borscht. Now, we need to fry the chopped vegetables. To do this, we need to add vegetable oil in a frying pan. We add first onions and then carrots and beets. Add some broth, then tomato paste and let it stew.
Please cut the potatoes. I will cut the cabbage. In general, there are more than 40 types of Ukrainian borscht. Quite a lot of time has passed since borscht was first mentioned and it already has completely different recipes. It now includes not only pork, but other ingredients as well. For the first time in our project, I cook pork. Let's see what comes. Galina, how many times a week do you cook borscht? Well, borscht goes good for some days. It is believed that, for example, borscht prepared yesterday is the most delicious. The soup needs to be steeped for some hours. And tomorrow it will be even more delicious, tastier than today. Great! Well, now we have chopped potatoes and cabbage. Our vegetables are sautéed, we will put the potatoes to boil. After that, we will boil cabbage too, for about five minutes. It is young and it will boil very quickly. Our beans should already be boiled before, separately. In advance. We can use canned beans. Here we have pepper, we have to cut it. Let's cut the pepper. I'll tell you about a fresh tomato so that our soup tastes well. Well, it should be peeled first. To do this, we just make cuts and for 10 seconds lower it into the boiling water. And then the skin begins to peel back. The tomato skin should be peeled because it is not easily digested by the stomach. So it is harmful for digestive system. Last but not least, we put some garlic. You know, rubbed garlic with lard. For this, you need to take lard, just a little bit, probably a tablespoon. I'll chop the garlic for now. It is first crushed like this, and then you need to grind it all. Dear friends, we have prepared everything. The main Ukrainian dish will be ready in a few minutes. I would point out that today's dish takes a lot of time and labor to prepare. What other dish of meat and vegetables can you imagine? Of course, Ukrainian borscht comes to mind first. I have no doubt that many people like this healthy dish, which contains large amount of vitamins. Ukrainians have many holidays, especially religious ones. Besides, we are quite a noisy people. We love to have fun, to sing loudly. And of course, we pay great attention to the preservation of traditions. My friends, well, I continue to get acquainted with the Ukrainian cuisine. Now our chef Valentina and I will cook sweet dumplings. Or rather, I will learn to cook them. Valentina, let's get started. Today we are going to cook dumplings. This is actually a national Ukrainian dish. It is hard to imagine Ukrainian cuisine without dumplings. Well, let's start with the dough. To prepare dough, we need some water, an egg, salt, a little sugar and flour. For dumplings, dough should be kneaded elastic, so that it is not tough. Dumplings in the Ukraine are called varenichki. They are cooked with any filling, such as potatoes, cabbage, mushrooms and even berries. As you like it. Why they are called varenichki? Because its filling was already ready-made earlier. It turns out that it is enough to fill dumplings with the ready filling and boil them. 
right? Yes, they are just boiled so that the dough is cooked and the inside is already ready. Yashat. Before I start, I will tell you what dumplings with cherries are made of. Well, in general, here we prepared the dough in advance. We prepare cherries. Well, first we remove cherry pits. Then we have flour for adding. We take two tablespoons of sugar and preferably corn starch. We divide this part and put it aside and cover it, because it helps keeping moisture in your dough. Now sprinkle like this and roll it out into a rope. Dumplings came to the Ukraine from Turkish cuisine in the 18th century. The Ukrainians tried and liked them and called them varinichki. So they began to cook varinichki. And then they became popular across Russia like dumplings. What if meat is used as a filling? If you put meat, they are called dumplings. Dumplings with any filling except meat are called vareniki. Would you like it? Try it. Well, I have enough experience in working with dough. Here, now we fill each dumpling wrapper. Add some sugar. Do we need to add sugar directly to the wrapper? Yes, sugar with starch. Well, we just put three berries. Valentina, it is clear that there are a lot of berries and fruits in summer and autumn. And in winter, what do you fill dumplings with? Most often, we make dumplings with potatoes and cottage cheese. Rolling out the dough correctly is also an art. I think it is good to master this technique. This is especially important when preparing dumplings, so that the dough is soft and tasty. And I can't wait to taste our dumplings. Dear friends, this is how Ukrainian richly served table Dostar Khan looks like. Please help yourself to delicious dumplings. To be honest, I know Kazakh traditions and customs well and adhere to them more than Ukrainian ones. I have three children. I have a daughter-in-law and a grandson. Our family is a small country. Since I married a Kazakh, I immediately adhered to his culture. Therefore, Kazakh customs are closer to me. Today turned out to be a big day. We had some fun at the Ukrainian fair, and with this positive mood, we prepared borscht and dumplings. Thanks to the representatives of this people, I got acquainted with Ukrainian history and culture, cuisine and crafts, even a little bit. This day was warm and unforgettable. Today is tomorrow's history and therefore it will certainly remain in our memory. And we are not saying goodbye. You watched Delicious Kazakhstan program. There are many exciting journeys ahead. Dear friends, in order to watch all the episodes of Delicious Kazakhstan project, subscribe to the Kazakh TV YouTube channel, tap the bell icon and like videos.